la house to something. Even far greater than what they could imagine or ask or think or imagine. Because Jesus has paid the price in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yesterday we began to look at uh, big love, big time. We began to look at big love and big time. Today I'm going to begin to speak to you and to minister to you about Mary, by the way, I want to say to you, thank you very much for stepping in. Thank you very, very much. Um, I want to begin to unravel to you the secrets of big love. What happens when big love is in action? Anne of Norway, I do ask you to please take note for me because those who take notes are not around tonight. Please take careful notes for me tonight. <coughs> okay, thank you, Berlin. Thank you, Berlin. Uh, Berlin, make sure you get in contact with me tonight after the conference. What happens when big love is in action? That's what we are sharing tonight. It's not enough to tell people that you love them or that you care about them. Are to express your loving thoughts towards them because love creates. Please write that down. One of the secrets of big love is that love creates. Love creates. Wherever true love exists something big something great is created sooner or later please can you write down as a major key wherever big love exists something big something powerful something great is created sooner or later. One of the things that I want to share with you that you have to know is number one, let's look at planning. Wherever there is big love, I want you to be aware that this is not an emotional splash. It is planning, decision, and execution. Please listen carefully. Wherever there is big love, I want you to be aware that there is planning, decision, an execution is not a coincidence. It's not something like some people talk about that uh, love will find them. No, you find love. You discover it. Love will not find you. That's why some of the greatest lovers in the world 
are people like Mary Magdalene, Ruth, Abigail, Esther. They did not sit down to wait for love. Love didn't find them. People like Rebecca did not wait for love. For love to find and discover them. It is what you do that shows the character of your love, the depth of your love. Every love that is worth big love must be carefully planned, decision carefully made, and executed. They are not things that are made in a rush. You sit down to think carefully about it. You weigh it. You look at it up and down. The consequences, the effects of my being in a relationship with God. The effect of my being in relationship with another human being. You don't work too hard to please your children. What your children do will show who really genuinely need you. You don't buy love. Love buys you. Ha <laughs> ha! Please write that down. You do not buy love. Love buys you. And treat you good. The next thing that I want you to, to see here is wherever big love exists, I want you to take an example of God before he created, he reconstructed Jesus, reconstructed this world, he and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity of God, the family, spend time to, to plan, to take a decision, and to execute it concerning the physical planet and concerning the making of a human being. Another thing that I want you to look at here, wherever this kind of love exists that we call big love, you find that there is a backup or protection. So let's go quickly to this. Let's bring back the word that God spoke to us from the beginning of the year. The desire of God and the desire of another human being in love with you and you in love with them is to produce one of the outflow of it is the production of protection. If there is no protection, then there is no big love. I know people who will say that they love you. If they have the chance, they'll kill you. Seriously. Protection, one of the questions you ask yourself, is this person capable of protecting me? This person who says, he or she loves me. Is this person capable of protecting me in every way you can think of the word protect? I'll give you an example. A woman went from somewhere to go and visit, a, a, to go for a date with a man in another state. And, um, They've eaten, they've drunk, they went out for a walk, 
at the back of the city. And from somewhere, a fox came out. A fox came out from the bush into the park and was just wandering on its own. The lover boy saw the fox and took off and ran and left the lady that came to visit him from a different state. He ran into his car and drove off so that the fox doesn't get him. And the fox wasn't looking for him. And the lady herself, she ran one way, shouting to the man to stop, to help her from the fox. The fox was not paying attention to it. It was going his own way. So when the lady told me this story, I said, that that man must be a real lover. <laughs> that man must be a real lover. The lady have to run out of the back and shout for help. And the man then drove back and came and asked her to hop in. And then they left. What about if the fox actually attacked the lady? You see, the love of God protects. The love of Jesus our Messiah, our King, protects. The love of Lucifer only protects you as long as they can use you. And then will never protect you as long as they've discarded you. They don't need you. Every love that is big must be capable of protection. That's why when you live in a nation where the military of that nation is not capable of protecting you and yours and your property and your business and your very life, then your life is in danger in that kind of environment. That's why the country that I come from it's a very dangerous place. Because anybody can kill you at any time. And as long as you are dead, there is no investigation. But here, at least, there is a strong military. Strong courts. I'm not saying that they don't have their own not saying that Europe and America and North America don't have their own problem, but at least it's better. Let's face it. At least you have the police. You have the law. Every big love protects. You have a backup. If God said to you, go and do something, it's out of love. So let's go into that. When love speaks, it speaks because it wants to do something big for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every big love is long term. It must have a guarantee for our future. Abraham, come, I will make of thee a great nation. There must be long-term future. Anyone who doesn't have the capacity for long-term future, you have nothing to do with that person. Long-term financially, long-term romantically, emotionally, ability to be with you long-term. Not when something happens to you, they abandon you. You have to be careful about people or someone who comes into your life 
And when things happen, life happen, they abandon you. Every big love must have in itself a long-term lifespan. Please write that down. Every big love must have a long-term lifespan. If it doesn't have it, you have nothing to do with it. No matter what the person is buying for you or telling you, if you discover that it doesn't have a long-term lifespan, abandon it. Hmm. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I hope you are taking note of what I'm saying tonight because these are very, very important. These are very, very important. Ah. I will share this with you so that you know. Um, if a love qualifies to be big love, there is persistency and pursuit. Persistency and pursuit to be with you. There is constant, persistent pursuant. Big love will pursue you in order to be with you all the time. If you are the person whom, if somebody want to be with you all the time, you don't want it, then you don't qualify for big love. You only want small love, little love. Um, there are people who love to be alone. Then you don't need big love. You just need small love. There are people who love themselves. They want their space all the time. But I want you to be aware that there are people who want to be involved in love that is big so that they can share with the other person. I want you to be aware of this. Mm -hmm. So there must be persistency. Hannah loved her husband so much, loved her marriage so much, that she must pay the price. To have a son, someone. Let's talk about honor. Wherever you find big love, you find honor. Wherever you find big love, you find honor. If there is no honor, there is no love there. If that person honors you, they will do everything to provide. And you will do everything in your power to provide. That's how this thing works. I've seen people who who congratulate themselves that they are pretty smart, that they've gone the other person to be the provider. And they now relax. The real issue here is two of you become providers. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> You see, when we talk about the dignity of the human person, we also, we are talking about honor. 
If you are telling somebody not to do a particular thing, don't be doing that anymore because it dishonors me. And the person doesn't listen. It means there is no big love. There is only small love. Big love, small love. Honor is a characteristics, an outflow, an overflow of big love for you by another person. That's what we see with God. Also, wherever there is big love, you become a special person. The thing that I want to balance here is never allow somebody to make you a special person without you making that person a special person. Never allow love to be one way. Never allow it. No matter how much that person likes you, no matter how much that person cares about you, never allow love to be one way. Please write that down. That's the major key. Who is that? Please, the person should... Please stop your, stop your phone. Stop your phone. Please write this down. No matter how much somebody loves you, no matter how much, never allow that love to be always from that person. Please do not allow it. Please do not allow it. Always make sure that is coming from both of you. Never at any time in your life allow love to be one way. Do not allow it. If, if, you, if you allow love just to be one way, there is a problem. Because you see, you are dealing even with God. Never allow God's love towards you just to be from Him. That's why I've made up my mind in my ministry. Those who do not honor me, I have little respect for them. Those who honor me, I have big respect for them. That's how it is with God. See, well, see this is how it goes. There are no favorite children of God. You make yourself a favorite. You, you don't... God doesn't choose you to be a favorite child. You choose God to be a favorite God of yours. And then he then chooses you to be a favorite child of his. Please write that down. Ha ha! Uh, don't say that because Jesus has paid it all. So, that's it. No, 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 that's not it. You decide how it's going to. Let me tell you, at the end of the day, you are going to decide how it's all going to play out. Whether with heaven or with earth, you are the sole decider with God. This is getting... Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Every big love must go through a battle. Battle. If you say you love somebody, you must be willing to do some serious battle. To, to, to build that love. 
Hannah did battle. You can read the Bible. The Bible is full of people who did battle in order for them to secure big love. He didn't come easy. Because everything God gives to you is going to be tried. It's going to be fought for. I am the attorney we were talking uh, in one of the cities of the U.S. And I said to her, I also said it to, to T girl, every good thing, every blessing is established by war. Every riches is established by war. Ha ha ha! Write that down. Every blazing, every riches, every wealth, every prosperity is going to be established by warfare. So if you are not ready to do warfare, to do battle, you will not have anything. That's why those of you who are coming to meet me in Wichita in the next two weeks or one week, I don't know. Those are the people who are going to become rich. Those who, who just want to settle down, they are, they are counting their nickels and dime, their pennies and pounds sterling and euro. You don't want to risk anything. Those are the people who remain where they are. I will pay price for big love because when I get it, I get everything. See, we, we, we are tired of preaching to and uh, telling people about how God will do it for them. God is telling me to tell you how you will make him do it for you. Ha <laughs> ha. You become special only to the level that you are willing to be special in the sight of God and in sight of human beings. You become special only to the level that you are willing to be special in the sight of God and humans. It's not God who is coming to come and promote you to be a special person. It is you who are going to work yourself to become special. You must speak for yourself. Please, whoever is taking note from me, please write that down. You must speak for yourself. If you want to become somebody, you must speak and act for yourself if you want to become somebody in this earth. If not, you won't. David did not sit down to pray for Goliath to die. He went and slay him. I want you to be aware of this. Abigail did not wait to be married to a king. She went ahead and met him. Ruth did not wait for Boaz to come and, and propose to her. She went ahead and said, look, let's do what we have to do. <laughs> hmm. Every big love must be bold must be very bold, very powerful. Next thing, every big love must result in prosperity. So it protect, it promote, and it prosper. Mm. Let me read you some scripture here. Let me read you some things about love, some how big love behaves. Okay, we're just done one hour. See, big love is bigger than everything else. Paul began to say in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. He talks about 
the different things that he can do, including walking miracles, all of that. If he doesn't have love, it's nothing. And so on and so forth. And I'm talking about big love. Um, if he doesn't have charity, I have nothing. Okay, let's see here. Um, even talk about, okay. Uh, is there anybody with a Bible tonight that can open to 1 Corinthians 13? That is after chapter 12, the next chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we begin to read from verse 4. Anybody? Excuse me, please. All participants are muted. All participants are unmuted. Is there anyone with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, chapter 1, 3, from verse 4? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I got it. Uh, what verse is it? Who again got it? Who again got it? Remember, I have it in 1 Corinthians 13. Okay, Mary, start to read. Start from okay. verse start from verse four. When you read verse four, William, you read verse five, okay? Okay. Okay. It says Charity suffer it long. Okay, hold it. Hold it. Don't lose where you are reading. Love is patient. Big love is characterized by patience. Ability to watch things. Ability to endure things. Now here you are not asked to be patient for things that will not benefit you. Or when we read this, uh, some people will read into it. Your in-laws will come and read into it that you should stay there and be beaten every day. That that's the meaning of that chapter. Of this thing. That you are to be beaten and bruised. Your teeth, the... the both of you are to box each other and fight every day. And you are to remain in that marriage. That's not what we are talking about here. Anything that is stress, so stressful that it has reached a point where you cannot endure it without dying physically or losing focus in life, you, you shouldn't stay in it. But if you're already in it, and you've been in it for a long time, and um, children are born into it, you've really, you poured all into it. If, if both of you can remake it again, please remake it. Rework it, make it work. Because you see, big love is something that you build. It's not something that just happened. Love must be built. Please write that down. Love must be built. If love is not built, love will collapse. Please write that down. Love must be built. And if it is not built, it will collapse. And especially big love. And when this kind of love exists, it must be patience. If you really want to build love, it is built with patience. Next, what is the next thing? And it's kind. Kindness. And kindness, that's generosity. Kindness. endurance of things that will work out to be celebrated is what we mean by love is patient or a charity suffered long. It's not saying that you must suffer. Simply saying patience. You must be patient while you build. But if there is nothing there for you to build, well, God help you. I don't know what you are patient for there. 
and is kind, is generous. They say, you, you is generous because, in this kind of thing we are talking about, is generous because they say harvest is there. It's generous because that is part of you. What's the next thing? Charity envies not. There is no envy. There are some of you, you start earning a bigger salary than your wife or than your husband, and envy begins. You start building a house for yourself, envy begins. You do something for your family, envy begins. See, these are all things that you have to pray for the Holy Ghost to expose the other person so that you can see it. Because let me tell you the truth. There are many human beings on the earth today who are willing. One of their greatest desire is to bring you down to their level. There are many human beings on the earth today whose greatest desire is to bring you down to their level and disgrace you and destroy you with small love. They are all over the earth. I have seen people who, who have many lovers and yet they want to bring you in to come and fight. They, there are men who want women to fight over them. And there are women who want men to fight over them. That's what makes them feel important. Look at it. The people are fighting over me. See how important I am? That's what they are telling you. Envy. Wherever big love exists, there is no envy. Envy doesn't come there. Instead, the person is trying to do everything to make you fruitful. So that you become successful. Let, let me tell you something. Love is a celebration of success. So you, you go and you, you succeed here, he succeed here, they succeed there, and they come and celebrate it. Love is a celebration of success, not envy somebody else. Please write that down. Love is a celebration of success. Not getting envious and jealous. Where you see people have petty jealousy and envy. Just leave those people alone because they are too low for you. They are low class. They are not your class. They envy your education. They envy your look. They envy this. Read the next one, please. It's not puffed up. It's not puffed up. What is the meaning of this vintage not itself? Where is the new English for us to look at? It's not bragging. It's not bragging. It's not bragging. It's not inflated. It's not bragging. Inflated and bragging. All those things ain't love. Don't you see how smart I am? <laughs> Say 
Someone told me about uh, their church, pastors of their church sending the church members emails today about this prophet. You know, they are always Republican prophets coming to tell us that Donald Trump is the next president. Seriously. Some prophets from England or from where? And people respect those prophets. And I'm really like, really? When did they go to heaven? When when did they go to heaven? Okay, even without even without the guy Mary as a prophet telling you guys what is going to happen. Can you not even look at it and tell who should be president and who is going to be? Or who will not be? Can't you guys just tell? Yes. Just by looking. And they took and somebody will be coming to come and give you prophecy. And you believe it. The same people who gave you prophecy about Mitt Romney will be president, says the Lord, who come to Sidrot. Think about it. I started cutting away from certain preachers in America when I began to see that they were not of God. That they cannot hear from God. That God doesn't... They talk about the Holy Ghost as though they live with the Holy Ghost. But when it comes to making decisions and leading the nation, you discover that they are goods. They, they are not even sheep. Talk less of being leaders. Why are people still watching Pat Robertson or Mike Modoc? Why, why are you sending your children to Liberty University? Go and look at the students of Liberty University are rising up against the honors. Because they are like, what we are seeing is not the same like what you are telling us to support. You go to a lot of the southern churches, a lot of churches that vote Republicans, they don't even have enough, enough stamina, spiritual stamina, to look at evil and call it by name. And then and yet they are preaching the Bible to you. The same people were there, their forefathers were there, preaching the same Bible and whooping people with slavery. They hold the Bible in one hand and they were doing another thing in another hand. And you think that it can marry as a prophet will condone that kind of mentality. After this election, I am going to, after this election, I am going to, I am going to cause, um, I'm going to stay the pot. I'm going to put a stick inside the pot and I will stay it up. Against, I will call people by names and I will beseech heaven to retire them. That they should never be, I'm going to ask heaven to dry up their money or to kill them. I'm very, I'm, I'm very incensed. I talk this way because of the prophetic mantle upon my head. Don't say the Lord when the Lord is not speaking. If you want to be a politician, then leave being a pastor. Don't lead us. Don't try to talk to us about the Holy Ghost. Because you are confusing the people. We are not joking here. This is serious business. This is not about collecting money and coming to come and talk and tell us that it's because uh, Democrats are abortion, Democrats are gay, this is that. As though most Republicans do not hold some of these views also. Those are not the things that make us Republicans. What makes us Republicans is bigger than those things. It is the same people who gave a prophecy that people should start buying the dinar, the, the Iraqi money, that one day is going to be big, and so on. And people bought it and accumulated nothing. You think America is stupid? 
to go and make Iraqis money big? Ha! Nigerian money has not yet been big. It's Iraqi money that's going to be big. Seriously? Hmm. Where do they, where, who, see, that is where I know that majority of what goes on in the church is witchcraft. And God has asked me to prophesy against political witchcraft, economic witchcraft, racial witchcraft, and religious witchcraft. Do you know how many years that Trump has woven his witchcraft over this nation? Through this entertainment, business, entertainment thing on television. Not through his business. Because if you look at the foundation of his business, there are a lot of crooked things there. Do you know how many years it has taken? And people, people kept quiet. People didn't pray and destroy it. And that's why he that's why he's doing what he's doing today. And if you did not know what is happening today, you have to know that what is happening today is what we call judgment on America. The seven year cycle, I told all of you at the beginning of this year that the judgment has started slowly. I also said to you guys, go back and look at all my videos on prophecy that there is a great judgment against Republicans because Republicans fail to be Republicans. So judgment has come to their house and their house will be bent down to the ground. And what will come out of it will no longer be Republicanism. It will be something completely different. I said it last year, 2014, 2015, I said all those prophecies, and at the beginning of 2016, go and look at those prophecies. They are all coming to pass. You fail to protect the house, and you raise up a monster, the demon that you raised and you used will always come back to burn down the house. Because if that demon cannot, cannot do the job that it was sent to do, and a stronger power in the other side shares it. When it comes back to you, it's coming to attack you. That's the judgment. God is not going to use an outsider to punish people. It will be an insider. And then he will also allow prophets and pastors and apostles, your educators, to receive word from Baal, familiar spirit and divination. And at the end of the day, when Hillary wins, they will tell you, they will give you a reason why she won. They will, the, the church will give you a reason why she won. But they are the same people who are preaching that God has power to do all things. God will make Donald Trump the next president, because that is what God has spoken. Shame on them. These are the same people who spoke about Mitt Romney. They are the same people who spoke about John McCain. And I was saying no, no, no. Today, they are the same people who are still speaking. And the idiots and the fools are still following them. They should be ashamed of themselves. And let me tell you, God has left a lot of ministry, a lot of churches, and a lot of pastors. What you have there is ashes. There's no fire. Because you look at them, you see they're bragging. You see they're bragging. You see they flating up of their knowledge and their business skill. You look and you see it all. And even if they don't have a penny, they will make you think that they have money so that you give to them. In fact, they will come to you and tell you that they are, they are trying to help you. They are trying to help you. 
So when they ask you to bring money, it's because they are trying to help. It's a lie. They want you to give to them to accumulate to what they have already. That's why I stopped giving pastors my money. I stopped giving my money to prophet, to pastors, to apostles, to all these people. I stopped giving them my money. I would rather use that money to help ordinary people. That's the work of God than to give it to pastors who want to go and buy the next airplane. They already have two, three airplanes. They want to buy more. They want to use that money to turn around to use it to insult us. No, I will not do that. You are not helping me. William, read the next verse. Okay. Okay, uh, now that behaves itself unfeelingly. What is that? That is verse uh, number what? Is that verse number five? Yes. Does not behave itself unseemly. What's the meaning of that? Oh, that behaves itself Indecent, indecency, indecency. That's what he's talking about. Indecency. Okay, continue. Speak not his own. It's not self seeking. Continue. It's not what? It's not easily provoked. Are you guys getting it? Indecent in words and action. It's not self-seeking. While you are trying to better your own life, you also are carrying the other person. And being patient, if that person doesn't know as much as you know, you carry that person, you accommodate yourself within the level of that person and carry the person, and that person should be willing to learn and grow with you. He's not easily provoked. If the other person is easily provoked, there is no big love there. Not easily provoked. And think it no evil. Hallelujah. And think it no evil. He doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Something happened to you. Oh, yeah, let's happen to her. Let's let it happen to him. He deserves it. When bad thing happened or bad news, they rejoice. <laughs> Bear it all things. Believe in all things concerning you, which is the right thing, not evil things. <clears throat> Hope it all things. Hope for the best for you. And endures all things for you. It never fails. It never fails. I've shown you how God look at big love. That's how God look at big love. It's what we just read from First Corinthians uh, 13 from verse 4. That's how God look at love. And that is why, in fact, let me tell you, big love is an opportunity and privilege for you to better yourself. For you to better yourself. Now, let me share with you this. You need to know this. Wherever big love exists, you will see miracles. 
miracles. You will see miracles. You will see signs. You will see wonders. Wherever it does not exist, wherever people doubt, wherever people do not believe, you don't see any of those things. Wherever there is big love, there is the manifestation of the presence of God and the demonstration of His power. Hallelujah. Wherever big love exists, the anointing, the blessing flows very easily. There is forgiveness. There is protection of people. Hallelujah. I want you to be aware of this because when you go through the Bible, this is what you are going to see about big love. In fact, we can summarize big love as it is, it is the power of God that he has released to us for us to prosper, be protected, and be promoted. Now, now let me let, let me share with you. Do your family members a favor by inviting them to our convention for this year. Please do them a favor by inviting them. And also send people our videos. Make comments when you watch our videos. Make comments. Make beautiful comments. Send it to people around you. Tell people to call our ministry to go to our shop, buy stuff. I want to thank you for being part of me during this week. My desire is to make a champion out of you. Remember that you are no longer under the curse, but the blessing has begun in you. This is Bishop Idikai Mary saying to you, I will see you next week. Bye-bye.